just recap some of the things we've done and then tonight I'll quickly give you four things and then we'll go. But some of the things we have heard, <laughs> some of the things we have heard in recent times is about church growth, isn't it? And that's what we are desiring. We are desiring that our church will grow and spread out to so many other places. And we said that there are three secrets to grow any church or any business. The first secret is make the brand visible. Amen. Yeah, if you want the church to grow, make the brand visible. So wherever I go, I should find the high city. It's very important. Then number two, invite many to the meetings. And then number three, walk in the light. Because people would hear what you demonstrate more than what you speak. So, make the brand visible. Invite many to the meetings and walk in the light. These are three simple secrets to church growth, isn't it? Yes. And then I've also given you three simple secrets to fruitfulness and prosperity. Amen. Yeah, so fruitfulness and prosperity. Number one, you need to be planted in a fruitful and a safe mountain. That is the first secret to fruitfulness and prosperity. Be planted in a fruitful and a safe mountain. Number two, be yielded to the vine dresser and his co laborers. That is the second secret. Be yielded to the vine dresser and his co laborers. Jesus is the vine dresser, the servants of God. Or the ministers are his co laborers. Be yielded to them. Then, number three. Number three. Be yielded to the vine dresser and his co laborers. Then, number three. Become a fruitful fig. Become what? A fruitful fig. This is also one of the very powerful things you have learned. Let me just give you a third thing we have learned. In recent times which are quick facts and powerful things for every believer how to become an expert at anything if you want to become an expert at anything anything you want to be an expert in robbery whatever anything you want to be an expert in there are three simple steps to become an expert at anything but maybe four steps because some teachers are bad teachers so the first step is choose your teachers wisely. If you want to be an expert, choose your teacher's word wisely. Choose those you want to learn from wisely. Then number two, listen attentively for the clear instructions. Listen attentively for the clear instructions. Then number three, Watch intelligently at the demonstrations. When your teacher is demonstrating an answer, watch intelligently. Then number four, practice, practice, practice. Because practice makes perfect. So choose your teachers wisely. Listen attentively for the clear instructions. Watch intelligently at the demonstration. Then practice, practice, practice. These are the four simple secrets to what? Become an expert at anything. Tonight I want to teach you four things that make your walk with God. Four things that will make your walk with God easy, beautiful, healthy. So four things that lead to a healthy walk with God. Four things that lead to a healthy walk with God. Four things that lead to a healthy walk with God. Me <laughs> 
Beshemema Mepese Meyewe Juma Ona Mono Yemre Oyame Sun Sun Bwafwe Beshe Mema Ampara Sun Sun Bwafwe Beshe Mema O Sun Sun Bwafwe Beshe Mema By being filled with the Holy Spirit alone cannot make you walk with God. You know, God is a spirit. And we are mortal men. So walking with him is sometimes a little bit challenging. So how do we make our walk with God healthy? So go to Colossians chapter 1 and let's read. I'll give you four things that makes your walk with God healthy. And remember, if you've not been baptized, I'll be baptizing on the 8th of September. So plan. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 to 12. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 to 12. After you have found faith, you cannot walk with God until you have believed. So after you have found faith, you should be able to walk with God. So he said, for this cause, we also, since the day we had it, since the day we heard about your faith, since the day we heard about how you have believed God, since that day, since the way we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Amen. This piece of scripture has four simple keys that will make your walk with God healthy. Lots of people are walking with God but their walk with God is not healthy. It is not a, a, a a very powerful street walk with him. They are walking with him, they are, but their walk with him is not beautiful. They are unable to walk properly with the Lord. So go back to verse 9. Let me give you the first key. It is impossible for you to walk healthily with God unless you are filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So you must be filled with knowledge. If you really want to walk with God in a healthy manner, you must be filled with knowledge. It is impossible to walk with God. It is impossible to walk with God unless you are filled with the knowledge of his will. Unless you are filled with the knowledge of his will, uh, the knowledge, let's continue, the knowledge of his will in wisdom and spiritual understanding. And please, I want you to pay attention to the last part. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Some people know the will of God, but they don't have the knowledge of the will of God in wisdom and spiritual understanding. They know the knowledge of God, but it is not in wisdom. So, they are doing the will of God, but it is not in wisdom. And it is not in spiritual understanding. Sometimes they know the will of God, but it is in carnal understanding. It is in fleshy understanding. Are you getting the point? They know the wisdom of God, but it is in carnal or fleshy understanding. It doesn't help. He said that you may have the knowledge of the will of God. What does God wants me to do? It is one thing to know it. But it is another thing to know it in wisdom. 
and in spiritual understanding. You can know the will of God, but you won't know it in wisdom. You know it in foolishness. You don't know it in understanding, but you know it in misunderstanding. The will of God. Are you following what I'm preaching? So you must know the will of God in all wisdom. One example of knowing the will of God in all wisdom is in the church of Corinth. When a man slept with his father's wife, and Apostle Paul says that, let us excommunicate that man. Later on, Apostle Paul says, if you forgive him, I forgive him. Lest the devil have an advantage over us. The will of God is that a little leaven or yeast will leaven the whole do. So when there is a little yeast, you remove it. But in spiritual understanding is, if you decide to remove all the yeast, the devil might have an advantage. So there should be a better way of dealing with the yeast of the living. That's what we call wisdom and spiritual understanding. Are you following it? Now, listen to this. It is impossible to know the will of God. You can never know the will of God. Get this one. You can never know the will of God except you are willing to despise and reject the pattern and the standards of the world. Write it. It's very important. So, 1A. <clears throat> 1A. Anybody who does not despise and reject the standards and the pattern of the world can never know the will of God. They will even pretend not to know it. When it comes to marriage, there is a standard and a way and a pattern the world marries. If you don't despise it, if in your what time, if there is no way you can find out how heaven wants you to do it. Are you getting the point? If you don't, if you don't despise the pattern and the standards of the world, you can never know the will of God. So be not conformed to the pattern of this world. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. And nobody will tell his will to his enemies. Are you following what I'm preaching? So you must despise and reject the pattern and the standards of the world. When you do that, then surely you are going to know the will of God. Am I preaching to you? So despise what? The pattern and what? The pattern and what? The standards of the world. If you don't despise, I say, there is no way you know the will of God. You should despise it as a silly thing. It shouldn't be something you are proud of. Never be proud of this pattern of the world or the standards of the world. That is the only way you find the pattern and the standards of heaven. Am I preaching to you? The second thing, if you want to know the will of God in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, are, you must be ready to renew your mind after the word of God. You must renew your mind after the word of God. You can never walk with God if you don't renew your mind after the word of God. Your mind must be renewed. As the word of God is coming to you, you must allow it to change the way you think. You must allow the word of God to help you to renew your mind. That is very important. So there is no way you will know the will of God except you are willing to have your mind renewed. Before all of us came to church and knew what God wants us to do, there is a way we used to think. You must actually begin to think in a new way in accordance with the word of God. So the third secret to know the will of God in all wisdom and spiritual understanding is to renew your mind, to allow the word of God to change the way you think. Now, let me give you the third key. The third key to knowing the will of God in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. The third key in knowing the will of God in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. The third key to know the will of God in all wisdom and spiritual understanding is to offer yourself as a sacrifice holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Give us Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. That is where all the three points are coming from. If you want to know the will of God, 
you must despise the standards and the pattern of the world. Number two, you must renew your mind. Number three, you must offer yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Lord, that you present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, he says, And do not be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God is. Does the scripture speak to you? So you never know the will of God except you are willing to despise and to reject. You are willing to despise and to reject the pattern and standards of the world except you are willing to renew your mind after the word of God and except you are willing to offer yourself as a sacrifice holy and acceptable unto the Lord. You will never know the acceptable perfect will of God. Amen and amen. All right, let me give you the second key. So go back to Colossians and let me give you the second key to a healthy walk with God. How do, don't forget that on Wednesday, we learned about the fact that unless you trust Jesus to pay for your sins, you'll not make it to heaven. But if you have trusted Jesus to pay for your sins, then you must also be able to walk with God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You must be able to walk with God all the way. Glory to God. Now verse 10, look at this. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord. Walk worthy of the Lord. So the, 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 the second secret to walking with God is decide that I don't just want to walk with God. I want to walk worthy of the Lord. Walk worthy of the Lord. They say, if somebody says I am a child of God. Can I say that the way I'm living my life is worth someone called the Lord's child? If someone says that I am a son or a friend or a daughter of this man, do I think what I'm doing is worth being called a daughter or a son of that man? It's also a secret. So you must make a decision to walk worthy of the Lord. You must make a decision that I want to walk or live my life in such a way that I would not be a disgrace and a shame to the kingdom. I want to walk worthy of the Lord. I will not be a disgrace and a shame unto the kingdom. Now, we can walk this way. We can actually walk worthy of the Lord if we focus on three things. There are three things you focus on. So look at the verse 10. Three things you focus on. If you want to walk worthy of the Lord. If you want to walk worthy of the Lord. Look at it. He said that ye might walk worthy of the Lord. Unto all pleasing. What it means is that you must focus on pleasing the Lord. Tell yourself that I want to please the Lord. It's one of the steps of walking worthy with the Lord. You tell yourself I want to please the Lord. I want to please the Lord. It's my focus that in everything I do, I want to please the Lord. It's my focus. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's my focus that I want to please the Lord. Now look at the next one. Being fruitful in every good work. So you must focus on becoming fruitful in every good work. Bible says that be children uh, towards malice but mature towards spiritual things. Don't be matured in finding ways of doing evil. Rather be matured in finding ways of doing spiritual things. Are you getting the point? Be matured in finding ways of doing spiritual things. So being fruitful in every good work. He said, towards malice be ye children, but be matured towards God. Be mature, being fruitful. 
So the first one is focus on pleasing God. The second one is focus on being fruitful in every good work. You must try to bear fruit in every good work. So that is the second step of walking worthy with the Lord. Focus on being fruitful in every good work. And then when you look at the third one, very marvelous. Focus on increasing in knowledge. There is no way you can walk worthy of the Lord except you increase in knowledge. So if you want to walk worthy of the Lord, focus on increasing in knowledge. Three secrets to being walking worthy of the Lord is number one, you must focus on what? Pleasing the Lord. To be pleasing you, pleasing you. This is my... Uh, it is what this is what I really want to do to be pleased and then you focus on being fruitful in every good work in every good work so if you see anything that is a good work tell yourself I want to be fruitful in this good work also and the third step is focus on increasing in knowledge you must focus on increasing in knowledge that is how you develop a healthy walk with God. Say amen to that. Alright. Let's look at the third step to a healthy walk with God. The first step to a healthy walk with God is what? You must be filled with the knowledge of the will of God in all wisdom and what? Spiritual understanding. The second step is walk worthy of the Lord. Bobra efata unyamkupong neba. Walk worthy of the Lord. Then step number three, go to verse 11 and let's see what is there. Step number three, be strengthened with all might. Be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power with all patience and work, long suffering with joyfulness. So the next secret to walk in, to a healthy walk with God, is be strengthened with might. Be strengthened with might. And the Bible is telling us that our strength, you you see, your inner strength, your strength, the thing that makes you strong in, in the might of the Lord are four. The things that make you strong are four. Number one, the first thing that makes you strong is the glorious power of God. Is the glorious power of God. You can never be strong inside you. You can never be strong within you except you have the glorious power of God. Except the power of the Holy Spirit is at work in you. Except that power is working inside you. You can never, you can never be strengthened with might. Glory to God. You can the glorious power. He said be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. According to all his glorious power. So the extent of might and strength in a person is proportional to the glorious power at work in that person. And you will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So one way to be strengthened with might is to be strengthened according to his glorious power. Glory to God. According to his glorious word, power. As we are filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit, we become stronger against satanic attack. Glory to God. Look at the second one. The second one that can make you powerful is all patience. Every person who has patience is powerful on the inside a patient person is powerful an impatient person is weak a patient person is very powerful amen a patient person is what very powerful so be very careful about someone who tells you that i know that one day i'll have the opportunity it's a very dangerous thing that's a patient person and no man is always strong. So there is a day you'll be weak. And that person knows that a weak day will come. And we are likely to meet. So patience make you very powerful. 
one of the greatest secrets of power behind my faith is my patience i'm a very patient person i take my time glory to god especially in the making of decisions i take a lot of time to make decisions am i preaching to you now the next thing that makes people powerful is long suffering those who have the ability to tolerate nonsense and suffering for a long time glory to god long suffering a very powerful person is one who can endure and are suffering for long people who cannot tolerate nonsense and suffering for long are very weak people are you getting the point so a very strong person is one that has the ability to endure what suffering that's what is called long suffering and then the fourth thing that makes you powerful on the inside is joyfulness and that one is actually not on its own suffering long with joy being patient with joy not being patient with complaining being patient with what joy the joy of the lord is your strength so if you want to be strengthened on the inside you must have patience and long suffering with joyfulness glory to god so the third step to a healthy walk with god is be strengthened with might the first step is what what is the first step what is the first step no you, what is the first step be filled with the knowledge of the will of god be filled with the knowledge of the will of god in all understanding and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding and the second step is focus on walking with the of the lord and the third step is be strengthened with what might be strengthened with might and we say the four secrets to internal strength the four secret to internal strength is number one what is the four secrets to internal strength number one is what the number one is what the glorious power the glorious power is a secret the glorious power the glorious world power the glorious world power the glorious world power the second secret is what patience all patience don't say me that maybe what me need one but it makes you weak all patience as you know many now one but glory to god and then the fourth the third secret is what long suffering give the child a long group or the better children on one and sir now if you watch us oh only my body i know as an it back on a man well only my body i watch us one other i should but not in a job are you getting the point so long suffering is always very important and the last one is joyfulness all patience and long suffering with joyful word ness is very important don't let anybody fool you if you find anybody with this particular kind of traits when you are misbehaving towards someone and the person just looks at you and smile it means that the person is trying to tell you i'm strong on the inside you just don't know it i'm strong on the inside am i preaching to you yeah i'm stronger than inside and when you see someone who tolerates your nonsense for very long is a sign of an internalized strength are you getting the point if you see someone who is patient when you now you say ah after all these things i've done to this person why does he come back he's very strong on the inside he's very strong on the inside and lots of people especially pastors and leaders like me are not people that can easily be broken if i could easily be broken i can never plant a church i cannot easily be broken and if the devil cannot break me easily if since 1994 september the devil have not been able to break me then remember i'm not easily broken you get the point yeah i suffer long under affliction what did i say i suffer long under affliction i will stand nonsense for a long time the devil have not been able to break me so many things can break me easily 
If I could be broken easily, I can be a pioneer. Do you follow what I'm teaching? That's how you build internal strength. Glorious power. It's not just about the Holy Spirit, but having all patience. All patience. All patience, including the patience to wait until the church grows. It's also a sign of internal power. Am I preaching to you? All patience. So these are virtues you need to develop. Joyfulness. You know, children, how many of you know that children are very resilient? Children are very resilient. Eh? Children are very resilient. That is why when you, the, I, I watched a video by UN, there were children who were in the midst of civil war and their parents had been killed. Dead bodies were lying in the streets and they were playing football around the dead bodies. So mommy is dead lying there and we are playing football. We are children. Children are very resilient in their mind. How many of you know that children can handle pain better than adults? You don't know that. Children even handle betrayal and hurt better. That's why you can beat a child. And then, then, then the child is crying. It's, oh, imwano, imwano, brah. And the child still come close to you. It's a sign of internal strength. Anytime you run away from people who hurt you, is a sign of very little strength on the inside. When you are really strong on the inside, you are able to look at your oppressors and forgive them. Am I preaching to you? You can take it or leave it to, but if you intend to walk with God, this evening's message is one of the very powerful messages you should forever remember. How to walk with God in a healthy way. How to walk with God without complaining or murmuring. The secrets that made Apostle Paul who he was. The secret that made all the early missionaries who they are. Is what I'm sharing with you. How to walk with God in a healthy way. Number one, be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Number two, walk worthy of the Lord. And number three, be strengthened with might. Number four, go to the next verse. Let's see. Giving thanks unto the Father. You will not be able to walk with the Lord except you form the habit of saying thank you Lord. If you finish writing, lift up your right hand and say thank you Lord. Now, why are we thanking God? Giving thanks unto the Father who has made us partakers Look at why we are thanking God. He has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has made us partakers. So one reason why we say thank you Lord is because the Lord has counted you and I worthy to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints. The Lord has counted us worthy to be partakers of the things that he has given to the saints. Am I preaching to you? So one of the things you shouldn't forget all of your life is that you are a partaker of the inheritance of the saints in the light the lord has made you justified meet appropriate the lord has counted you worthy to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints if the saints have an inheritance of healing it means i am a partaker of healing if they have an inheritance of peace i am a partaker of peace if they have an inheritance of joy i am a partaker of joy if they have an inheritance of righteousness i am a partaker of righteousness if they have an inheritance of prosperity i am a partaker of prosperity if they have an inheritance of power i have a partaker if they have an inheritance in heaven i have i am a partaker of that all of the inheritance of the saints i am a partaker of that inheritance the Lord has counted me meet, qualified, and justified to be a partaker. These are the four secrets to walk with the Lord. Be filled with the knowledge of the will of God. Walk worthy 
of the Lord. Walk in that will. And then be strengthened with might on the inside. Be strength. May the Lord give you strength on the inside. May you become stronger on your inside. That is the secret to fight demonic powers. You can never fight demonic powers if you are not strong on the inside. So may the Holy Spirit begin to fill you. May the glorious power of God come upon you. Your life would never be stopped in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Be filled with mind. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. That means be strengthened with might. And when the Holy Spirit, when the glorious power of God comes to reside in you, when you have patience, when you have long-suffering, when you have joyfulness, then you have that power, you have that ability that makes you strong on the inside. May something begin to work on your inside and make you strong as you walk with the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive that power. Receive that grace. I receive it. And you are made a partaker. You have been made appropriate, justified to partake. May you partake in the inheritance of the saints. In the name of Jesus, partake in healing. Partake in deliverance. Partake in power. Partake in prosperity, partake in divine health, in the name of Jesus, receive it and be a partaker of the goodness and the message of the Lord may you be a partaker of the grace, of the grace and power and love of the almighty in the name of Jesus so we have been considered justified to be partakers, glory to God glory to God Tell yourself, I am a partaker of the inheritance. I have an inheritance in Christ. Glory to God. Please be on your feet and just lift your voice and begin to pray and speak to the Lord and say, Father, I want to walk with you in a healthy way. I want to walk with you in a healthy way. Just begin to pray, begin to speak to the Lord. Regete a shandala baroka paya pande lebe kuri masanta kayaya palora baya katandala bazipaya. I want to walk worthy with you, O God. I want to walk worthy with you, O God. I want to walk worthy with you, O God. I don't. I don't want to walk anyhow. I want a healthy walk with you, O God. Even tonight, as I come into your presence, give me the grace it takes uh, to walk worthy, O God. Uh, a healthy walk with you is my desire. In the name of Jesus, glory to God.